What's going on guys? We are trying a new microphone today, so if it sounds weird, I apologize. I used a really good shotgun mic for a long time, but I always felt like I had to yell at the camera. So hopefully this changes that. So recently there has been a lot of gun control passing throughout the country, my state included, and I will be leaving if this actually goes into effect. But it got me thinking about these assault weapons bans and how misguided they are, to put it nicely. So today we're gonna do a little experiment. First of all, what is an assault weapon? Well, no one really knows. It's a long list of firearms and accessories, and it's growing every day. I've come to the conclusion that if a gun looks cool, it's probably going to end up on that list. And the word kind of has a negative intention baked into it, because assault is a verb, and inanimate objects cannot assault people. Now, assault rifle is a term that is used mainly in a military context to describe full auto battle rifles and stuff like that. But because of the media, when most people hear assault rifle, they automatically think of AR-15s, AKs, and other semi-automatic rifles that millions of Americans own. And here recently, I've even started hearing assault pistol, which was a meme just a couple years ago. So these things progress quickly. So this is an article written on the Nashville shooting that just happened a couple days ago, unfortunately. Um, the weapons used are listed as a kel Sub-2000 assault rifle, an assault pistol, and a handgun. Yep, an assault pistol. So today I want to compare the AR-15, which would be considered an assault weapon in just about every ban, and the pump action 12 gauge shotgun, which is not considered an assault weapon, and see if the AR-15 is actually more dangerous. All right, first up we have the AR-15, America's most popular rifle and guaranteed to be on every assault weapons ban. In fact, this is what most bans are targeting right here. We will be using 20 round magazines today because YouTube does not like the 30s either. It even says 20 right on it, and I think I only put 10 rounds in here, so. Let's shoot it. Almost no recoil, very loud. One thing I will say about the AR-15 is you could probably see how easy it is to shoot quickly and stay on target. I will concede that point, and that's because it is not the most powerful rifle and it has almost no recoil. And the gun we're comparing it to is the 12 gauge shotgun. So this is the Winchester 1897 trench gun, a piece of American military history, most prevalent in the trenches of World War I, but was used in service all the way through Vietnam. And this thing's a beauty. And this shotgun is also slam fire, which makes it 10 times cooler. So I picked the 12 gauge shotgun because these are always mentioned by the anti-2A as a safe alternative. Just blast two shells in the air and the bad guy will leave, all that stuff. And they're almost never included in these weapons bans. But I think you'll see it's a good thing that these are not used in shootings very often because shotguns are very powerful. This one's called the DP-12. It holds 16 rounds of 12 gauge fully loaded. I only put 12 in it, but I think you'll get the point. That's a lot of firepower. So you could probably see the shotgun had a lot more recoil than the AR-15 did, and that's because they are launching a much bigger projectile. The 12 gauge shotgun is a very common caliber for deer hunting and stuff like that. Whereas the 223, in a lot of places, it's considered too small for hunting deer. So despite what Whoopi Goldberg said, a 223 will not explode a deer. Now, before we start shooting stuff, I wanna start with the cardboard target and just show you guys the size of the bullet holes that we're getting from each of these guns. We're gonna start with the AR-15, and this one, of course, is shooting the 223. Just a 22 caliber bullet. 
Let's check it out. And there is the AR-15. Again, just a little 22 caliber hole right in the middle of that cardboard. Now let's try the 12 gauge shotgun and see what the difference is. And the trench gun. For this one, we are gonna use some double-op buckshot, probably the most common 12 gauge ammo out there. And you can see the size difference from the double-op buckshot pellet to the 223. And not only that, if we zoom out, there are nine of them. And from 10 or 15 yards away, it covered that entire cardboard target. So if they miss with the 223, it's your lucky day. Whereas the double-op buckshot gives them nine chances to hit something vital. And that's why they call them scatter guns. Now let's try a 12 gauge slug. I'll go ahead and give you a close up look at that projectile. Compared to a 223, this is basically a cannonball. I could hear the bullet impact. <laughs> And there is our 12 gauge shotgun slug right there. This is from the wad. So not only are you getting hit with a 500 grain piece of lead going 1600 feet per second, you're also getting slapped across the face with a piece of plastic for good measure. But you can see the size difference from the slug and the double up buckshot pellet right there. And then an even bigger difference from the slug to that tiny little 223 up there. Now I will concede that the AR-15 is going about twice as fast and the bullet hole can kind of be deceiving because they definitely do a lot of damage. But so does a 12 gauge shotgun when you're shooting buckshot or slugs and both of these are going more than fast enough to penetrate soft targets. All right boys let's do some science. I have two full cases of pop sitting on the table. We're going to shoot them with each gun and see what the difference is. Starting with the AR-15 and for this one I am going to use the best 5.56 that I have. This is the Black Hills 77 grain OTM. This round slaps. We'll go ahead and shoot the Mountain Dew first, since it's gross. Not bad. And for the trench sweeper here, we will use the 12 pellet law enforcement double op buckshot. Going 1,300 feet per second. Putting this one on the Pepsi. <laughs> okay, the 5.56 hit our Mountain Dew right there, a little bit lower than I was aiming. I always forget about the holdover at close range with those optics, but if we walk around to the back, Maybe we can see how many exploded. It looks like there's quite a few survivors in this one. Definitely took a few out as well though. So we'll just start counting these things. So inside the box, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight survivors. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So it looks like the 5.56 only exploded seven out of 24. And I use the Black Hills because that's a hollow point that really breaks apart on impact when it hits stuff like that, but it still only took out seven. Let's count the Pepsis. And on the front, you can see the entrance holes from that double-out buckshot. I think several of those pellets actually went high, so not all 12 of them hit the front, but it looks like we got a good eight to 10 of them on there. And then on the ground, I can already see one way over there. That's probably the one that got shot up into the air. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, just on the ground. So already we're tied with the Mountain Dew. And then if we look at the case, there are not many survivors <laughs> from that 12 gauge shotgun. Even the bottom row appears to be pretty much all exploded. Go ahead dump those out and see what we got. There's one survivor right there, definitely a full can. And that one's got a hole in it. That one's definitely got a hole in it. Okay, so it looks like we got 23 out of 24 with the 12 gauge shotgun. Well, I think we have a winner, 12 gauge by a lot. Let's go ahead and finish off the survivors. Where 
are they? <laughs> I wanted to make sure my last shot was on a full can. Next science experiment, pineapples. Feel free to send this to the FBI for their ballistics program because this is all highly valuable information. We're starting with the AR-15 and once again, using the same round. Black Hills 77 grain OTM. Didn't look like much going in, but I assure you coming out the back, there's probably some damage. And for the shotgun this time, we will use a nine pellet double out buckshot. I'm gonna try not to miss high like I did last time. <laughs> shotgun for the win. Well, I actually can't even see the entrance hole from the 5.56 because it's such a small bullet, but if I flip it around, you can see coming out the back, it did quite a bit of damage. So that's the pineapple from our 5.56, and that's the pineapple from our 12 gauge shotgun. There's not much left. I do see a piece over here. Looks like the top of it. And that's all that's left. The rest of it turned into a fine mist. Now I'm obviously trying to prove a point in this video and I did skew the test to slightly favor the shotgun, but I'm not gonna lie, I did not expect that big of a difference on the pineapple. And I picked those over watermelons because they don't typically explode like watermelons do. The shotgun proved me wrong. And now we have a pineapple to finish off. I can't let it go to waste. Now, all the tests that we've done so far, you could argue, are somewhat unrealistic, and I would probably agree with you. So next up, we're gonna try something a little bit better. This is a human organ block from Ballistic Dummy Lab, and it looks like something right out of Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment. So it's basically a fake human organ surrounded by ballistics gel designed to show you what bullets do to internal organs. This one is a liver, and it doesn't get much more realistic than this. Well, I wish I had two of these blocks so I could shoot them with each caliber, but since I don't, and my goal of this video is to kind of show how effective shotguns are, we'll start with this, and if there's anything left, then I'll hit it with the 5.56. 12 gauge versus human liver. Let's see what it does. <laughs> Okay, so every single pellet went in pretty close to the middle of this thing. We were at close range, so they didn't spread a whole lot. And you can see the damage that it did to that ballistic shell. If we go around to the back, it also looks like every one of those passed all the way through and came out the other side. And not only that, you can also see that they're all starting to turn in different directions. So even going through targets, the pellets continue to spread. There aren't too many living things on the planet that could survive one of those. I think we could definitely squeeze a 5.56 in that upper right corner. It might not hit the liver, but at least we'll see it in ballistics gel. Now, I've not walked up there yet, but what I'm expecting to see is a bullet that's completely broken apart and one very big wound cavity, as opposed to nine smaller wound cavities from the double out buckshot that equal the size of a fist. Let's check it out. And I put that 5.56 right there in the upper right corner. If we go around to the side, <laughs> that's what 3,200 feet per second will get you right there. I told you guys that round is one of the best, and it looks like we even have a pretty big exit hole. Look at this thing from the top. That is one of the biggest wound cavities I've ever seen from a 5.56. Wow. So the Black Hills is established as a bad mofo. There's no doubt about it. And I would say the 5.56 could have even won the ballistic shell test, but it's not so much of a difference that the 5.56 is on like another planet or should be banned and the shotgun shouldn't. They're both lethal. They're both very lethal and they're both very effective self-defense tools. So that's all I was trying to prove. Um, the 5.56 definitely did well, but 
so did the 12 gauge shotgun and both of those rounds just absolutely obliterated that ballistic shell. Of course, any firearm in the wrong hands can be a problem, and that's a very complicated issue that we're not gonna solve today, but the AR-15 is not any more powerful or any more dangerous than other very common firearms that we all have. It just has a different stigma attached to it, and that's why people think these guns are so dangerous. It's just a rifle. Now, I am not here to say that the 223 or the 556 is a weak cartridge because it is certainly an effective self-defense round, and that's what firearms are designed to be, the ultimate equalizer for people at a physical disadvantage. And against a bad guy with a gun, we're all at a physical disadvantage. It's cliche but true, the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. However, as you saw today, a lot of other weapons, including 12 gauge shotguns, can be equally or far more effective than AR-15s. But for whatever reason, they are not under attack like the rifles are. So I'm hoping people will see this video and realize that it is just another rifle, not any more or less dangerous in the wrong hands, but in the right hands, it is one of the most effective life-saving tools on the planet. Hope you all enjoyed it. Share this video with your anti-gun friends and family if you have any, and let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you did like the video, guys, please hit the like button for me. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.